Chewy Switch was a bad idea when I needed to film. Oops. Oh, that's good squishy. Hello, my friends. That was unnecessarily musical. I don't know why. I still can't get this intro down. Welcome back to my jump scare, to be honest. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Hazel Jane and I paint crap on my face. Which is actually what we're going to be doing today. For once. Also, I changed my hair. To be fair, the, the changing of my hair is kind of to do with today's video anyway. That's kind of the reason for doing today's video. It's all, it's all interlinked. Basically. Today we are going to be doing a makeover, and more specifically, it is a makeover that I have wanted to do since I was about 12. Today, it is all about... Whilst I was definitely more of an emo than a scene queen in my youth, I do remember being obsessed with the aesthetics of scene queens and the makeup and the hair. Uh -huh. If you don't really know what I'm talking about, scene is considered like a subculture of emo, fashion, and just general alternative styles that was super, super popular in like the early 2000s. Between 2000 and 2010, I'd say was probably the peaks of the whole thing. I should have done more research into this. It originated in the early 2000s, generally across America, and then it kind of spread to everywhere else. And I think the term was first used around sort of 2002 through the use of the name Scene Queen. Although Scene Queen was actually used as a derogatory term to describe attractive popular women perceived by older hardcore musicians as only being involved in hardcore for the subculture. Kind of in the same way that any woman who wears a band t-shirt will inevitably get the comment of Make three songs, boy. I didn't know that scene queen was actually a derogatory term at first, but I love how they just kind of took it and ran with it and were like, Yes, I'm scene queen. What other? As with any kind of style within the alternative realm, obviously there is sort of specific music types that are involved with it. However, for the purposes of this video, I am going to be focusing purely on the kind of aesthetics of scene. If you lived through that time, as soon as you hear the word scene, you will picture it very precisely in your head. But it was all about the hair, the accessories, and the kind of juxtaposition of super, super cute and vibrant and colourful with that like sort of emo edge to it. There was a lot of like leopard print and animal print, but also characters like Gloomy Bear and other creatures that took that combination of cute and violent and just Speaking of Gloomy Bear, the whole reason behind this video is because I was getting ready to film a review video of the new Killstar and Gloomy Bear collection. Once I started looking into Gloomy Bear a little bit more, I realised that it was quite heavily associated with scene style. I thought it would be fun to turn myself into a scene queen and why not make a video out of doing the makeover itself. So without waffling on for too much longer, let's go. Why do I always do finger guns? Sat over here like buddy Christ. Okay, so the first step of this progress... Pro the first step of this process is make. Normally I would just clip my hair back, however, I found these lurking in the back of a drawer somewhere and it felt, I mean, not that you can even, what? Not that you could really see it. I mean, they're leaning slightly more into the um, ooey territory, but. So my skin has already been like cleansed and moisturized. It's not that I think that was necessarily part of the routine back then. But I'm gonna start with the brows and the eyes because otherwise I'm gonna get eyeshadow. <sighs> Now, whilst I do want this makeover to be fairly authentic, I need to try and make it look acceptable because I do still have some other stuff to film once I finish this. <laughs> now, the first thing I am going to start off with is the brows. Now, if we are looking at anything early 2000s, them brows were skinny. Coming off the back of the 90s, it was the era of overplucking, super arched, but generally just super skinny brows. For my brows, I actually want to use a new product that I have wanted to try ever since I got my hands on it. This product is so thin, I don't know if my camera is going to focus on it properly. So this is the MAC Pro Brow Definer. It is a brow pencil and the major selling point with this is that it is a millimeter thick. So in the interest of a skinny brow, I thought this would be the perfect opportunity to see how it works. Yeah, that is, that is some fine light work. <laughs> Okay, I've never drawn my eyebrows on on camera before, so I don't know how well this is gonna go. Oh. <laughs> That's like if Dwayne Johnson was a Disney villain. Oh, I shouldn't have feathered the middle. They didn't have the feathered. That wasn't a thing. No, it was very much like a lot more of a blunt edge, and it didn't come very far into the middle. It was still quite far out. Okay, if anything, I think I've actually done it a bit too thick now. Oh, it's always promising when I'm struggling at literally the first step. <laughs> 
Now I just need to try and match it on the other side. Although I will say this MAC pencil has definitely got the precision. I've just realised these are low-key the brows that I give myself now. I am just going in with a brow pen to make them a little bit darker. I hate doing brows on the best of days, so I'm just going to leave it for now. I wasn't going to draw myself insane because I'm pretty sure the hair is going to cover it in the end. Which means we are now moving on to... So I have a black P. Louise eyeshadow base. Now, I know eyeshadow bases weren't a thing, but again, I kind of do need this makeup to last a little bit, so. The kind of eye makeup that I want to do with this is generally eye makeup that I have done and worn quite a lot anyway. It's just this big, blown out, smoky under eye. I'm going to blend out the edges a little bit with like a little bit of pink again, just to tie it all together. I'm not worried too much about creating like a winged out shape or anything like that because it wasn't particularly winged out, it was more just like. So before that dries down too quickly, I'm just going to go in with a black shadow on like a packing brush. I mean, I am packing it so hard into my lid, I'm basically just stabbing myself in the eye. I've just realised I've got no primer around the outside of my eye, so I don't know how well the colour's going to stick. I swear I do I actually know how to do makeup. I know carving underneath the brow was not part of this style or routine, this was very much a 2010s onward kind of thing. You know, I need to give myself at least some kind of fighting chance to make this workable. Okay, so now I get to attempt to blend this out a bit more with like a pinky shade. <laughs> but we're just going to do some very rough blending with this. Definite emphasis on the rough. I think once I get down to the lower lash line, it will pull it together a bit more because the super heavy thick under eye makeup was a staple to scene and style. Why am I holding it all of my brushes like this? Like, I have an entire desk in front of me. I'm just going to go back in with that pink just around the edges. Okay, so that's kind of the top eye shadow, like, done? Or at least as done as it can be for the moment which means the next step is moving on to the face so scene style face makeup i think was generally just sort of like foundation and powder or maybe foundation and concealer and powder but there wasn't really any contouring no blush and the goal was to look as matte as possible and if you were around during the scene style era then you'll probably be familiar with the infamous dream matte mousse yeah. which i think every millennial has tried. I was never a big makeup person, so I didn't wear it that often. I did have the Dream Matte Mousse because I think it was just a rite of passage, to be honest. But the Dream Matte Mousse is not a thing anymore. Now, I have exceptionally dry skin anyway, and I'm going to be going in with quite a lot of powder, so I do want to try and give my skin at least some kind of chance. I've seen a few people use the KVD Good Apple Foundation or this style of makeup because you can then just set it with the powder. Now, as you can see, this one is our <laughs> pale, which to be fair could actually work better for this look. So I might go in with this and see what happens. Okay, I may have forgotten quite how pale this shade. It, I mean, the coverage is there. I don't know. Maybe I could make it. Okay, this, this may have been about it. Why am I still trying to make it work? Unless I start bringing it properly down onto my neck. But even then, maybe if I keep going, it will work. I've just noticed that... Why am I still drawing it? I think it's just because I actually really like the formula of this foundation that I'm just desperate for the shade to work, even though... I don't know why I still keep it. <laughs> Okay, I know I said scene makeup doesn't usually incorporate contour, but I want to try and save this. This is maybe saving it. Maybe. I don't know why I didn't just go in with a foundation that I know matches. I've kind of managed to reel it back in a little bit so it doesn't look... What is I am going to go in with some concealer to try and hide this. Oh, I'm stressing myself out with this already. I was going to use my KBD concealer, but all the oil has completely separated. I should probably throw that away. I feel like if I use that, bad things are going to happen. I'm going to go in with the Makeup Revolution IRL Filter Finish Concealer because it is a fairly full coverage and like matte finish. And I also have the HMB concealer in SF0 because this is one of the brightest concealers I think I've ever used. Okay. That actually worked a lot better than I expected. It's kind of neutralized some of the like ashy undertones and it has managed to stop the foundation from making me look quite so much like a ghost. It is a bit more workable now, I think. God, that foundation is so bright. I'm going to add like a tiny bit of a HMB one just to really sort of separate the under eye from the rest of the face. I mean, even though it's basically the same color. 
base makeup, I think, has been kind of saved. Maybe. Next up. Oh. So I'm going to use a combination of the Huda Beauty powder and the Trigwell Cosmetics. This is Sugar Cookie and this is shade Zero. I need to set the under eyes so quickly because there is a lot of product there. Oh, it's so dry. Under eyes are set so I can kind of take my time with the rest of the face. This is where I need one of those giant powder puffs that you see where it's like they just whack themselves in the face with it. That would be quite a fun video to make actually just trying to do your makeup with like oversized products. Just oversized everything. I thought I said I wanted to use a foundation that would at least give my skin a fighting chance of being able to breathe. That all that it's really done is mean that I've had to go in with a million times more powder than I would normally ever use. This is picking up all the dry skin on my forehead. Real nice. I don't think I've ever used so much setting powder on my face before. Now foundation lips are part of the aesthetic but that's it's own step that needs its own moment. I also keep eating the foundation. So going back into finish the eyes, I'm just gonna go in with a gel liner on the bottom and just layer it on in there. Honestly, this makeup isn't actually that far off from my usual style. As you can see, my gel liner is very long. <laughs> the crusty, unblended lower lash. Now I feel like a teenager again. To be fair, the amount of setting powder that is under my eye, I don't think I could blend this out even if I wanted to. I'm gonna try and blend it out a little bit. It's a little bit too crusty. So I'm not so much blending it out as I'm just trying to like soften the edge a little bit. The scene style still had a very definitive outline. Ow. Doing this kind of makeup, if you suffer from like watery eyes, must have been an absolute nightmare. I don't know what the shadow on this side is so much darker than this side. I need to try and pack the black shadow back on this lid without it dropping onto the rest of my face. Okay, it's it's coming together now, I think. So scene makeup did often have quite a harsh sort of like liner line. Now, I never really used to do winged liner, on wi winged eyeliner. So it's part of the reason why I hate doing it now because I had like no practice when I was younger. From everything that I've seen, like winged liner wasn't really a thing, but I wanted to go in with just a felt liner just to try and like emphasize that Line up, blind. I think this headband is literally cutting off the circulation to my brain. The inner corner is working, but I think I need to make it thicker. Okay, so now that the eyeshadow and liner and everything is done, I'm gonna move on to mascara and lashes. Now, false lashes especially weren't really a big part of like OG scene days, I don't think, but super, super thick, clunky mascara was. Oh, I hate doing this. I think curling my lashes is one of my least favourite parts about doing makeup. I had a really bad experience once with like a cheap pair of eyelash curlers. They were made of plastic and when I was squeezing it down, it snapped. If I remember correctly, it ripped all of my eyelashes out, which obviously, you know, I had like a boot. But honestly, the main thing was just that it traumatised me from using eyelash colours for a very long time. To be honest, I'm not sure I've entirely recovered from it. Now, I am going to put a pair of lashes on the top just to but I'm gonna really layer it on the bottom. So for lashes, I think I'm gonna go with these from Boldface. They are ridiculous. I genuinely used to wear these kind of lashes to work like every day. But we're talking like eight, nine hour shifts with an hour commute either side of it. I wonder if that's why my eyes get bloodshot constantly now. So big, it's ridiculous. It's actually casting a shadow on my inner corner. Okay, I don't know, maybe these were the right lashes, but... No, no, no. Realistically, I think the last part of the face makeup is the lips, which we don't need to worry about gloss or lipstick or anything like that because scene queens were known for the infamous foundation lips, or I guess probably more specifically like concealer lips because it was super pale. I am going to try adding like the tiniest little bit of lip liner just so that my lips don't get completely lost. Rather than going with the KVD foundation because it is so pale, I'm just going to go in with a different foundation. This one is a matte one. I'm only using like the tiniest bit to go on my lips. That'll do it. I hate the feeling of like foundation on my fingers. I don't know. You know the worst part about this is the fact that I genuinely did used to use concealer as lipstick. Not even that long ago. Sensory issues are not enjoying this very much right now. Oh. Okay, so the next part of this process is arguably the most iconic, and that is. I am not a hair stylist by any means. This is about my usual standard. So this is going to be interesting. So I found this little like bundle of colourful hair extensions on Amazon, which I thought would be really cute and add to the whole look. I didn't realise they're so small. They're so small. Like they're so 
They're so thin and shiny. I mean, it serves me right for getting them off Amazon, but... So I picked out a couple of the pink ones that were kind of close to the pink that I have in my hair. And then I'm going to go in with a little bit of the black hair dye that I used. I think I'm going to go for like old school scene raccoon tail stripe extension. So when I said I wasn't a hairstylist by any stretch of the imagination, it also extends to the fact that I don't understand a lot about hair dyeing or extensions, that kind of thing in general, because whilst I had all the best will in the world for dyeing the raccoon stripes into the extensions, I, I went to like wash them and any dye that was on these just completely washed off. I mean, it is 100% my own fault because these are, I mean, you can see just how shiny these are. I'm pretty sure these are just it's too late on plastic. So it's not really that surprising that the dye just didn't take to it at all and then slid off. Now obviously scene hair is known for being rather big. So the last thing that I want to do is try and attempt some kind of scene hair and then have to change. So I'm just going to do a little quick change a roux and then change a roux? Oh, I don't know who this person is. My face is so pale that the white balance on my camera keeps making everything orange. But in the meantime, how cute is this t-shirt though? Anywho, we are back. Top has been changed. Hair has been straightened to within an inch of its life. Ignore what is happening with these bits at the front. I did have bangs. I am growing them out. Which, to be fair, may actually work in my favour for the whole fringe thing because I realised seen hair generally relies very heavily on layers because there's a lot of, like, teasing it. And I have no layers. So this may look like a hot mess. I have no moisture in my face. So obviously I currently have a middle parting and ideally for this kind of hair I need it to part from like my ear. So I don't know how <laughs> Oh god. Okay, I do not know how well this is gonna work right now. It's a bit on the like thin side as far as the fringes go. So I can like back comb bits and spray bits and do bits. I've got no fucking idea. How they did this like every day. That is a level of commitment that I just do not have. Obviously I have my little multicolor rainbow crappy hair extensions, but I also have these super good crappy hair extensions. So I might see if I can put like a layer of those because then I can back home the rest of it. Oh, it's pulling, it's pulling, it's pulling. So obviously this is not going to blend in very well with my actual hair. Oh. Although, oh, it's because the rest of it's on my head. Oh. I can take like the top layer, just back home like underneath it. I can still keep it vaguey. Okay. I have misplaced everything. Okay, we have some volume. It's it's a bit bird nesty. And then turn it back from this. Just the arm strength needed for this alone. Okay, yeah, we're getting volume out to the sides, but just not on top, which is where I need it. The volume is perplexing me. I've added in one of the cheap crappy extensions into the kind of fringe bit. And whilst it's not the most subtle of blends into the rest of the hair it does help kind of so i'm going to add in a couple more of these just like throughout a little bit to blend it into the other hair extensions because the only problem is that none of these pink strips match at all either to each other or my hair i don't even know where i want to put it okay i didn't realize quite just how obvious that one at the top was <laughs> so the back combing is quite frankly just like, it's mildly acceptable if you only look at it from a certain angle. So I think the hair is done, which means we can now move on to the last part, which is the X. So facial piercings were a massive part of the scene look, and obviously I already have quite a few. Probably one of the most commonly associated piercings with the scene look is snake bites, which annoyingly I did actually used to have not that long ago as well. I got them on an impulse, but they were pierced really badly and I ended up taking that. I want to give myself a little bridge piercing and then I have some rings to put in. I'm just mapping out with a little bit of lash glue. I think these are the same size. Very, very carefully. Try and put these on evenly. I did have two piercing loops that were exactly the same size, they were all uniform, and then I dropped one. So it is now gone. So in the meantime, I found two more spare loops, so I'm just hoping they work.
this this was what I wanted when I got them done. So I have a couple of like different necklaces that I wanted to try, but the main two that I wanted to include were these two. These are from one of my favorite jewelry brands. If you've seen pretty much any of my content, I would have been wearing a piece from this brand because I think I have like 20 of them now. <laughs> these are from a brand called Love Rocks. They are all handmade by the fabulous Ry Rio Rio. Whatever. I feel like these two were quite fitting for this kind of vibe. I want the last few little accessories for this look, I found these like little tiny heart oh. clip things. Ew. And then lastly, <laughs> I have some thoughts. I swear to God, if I had the time and the energy and the hairspring, I genuinely do kind of want to look like this every day. Oh my God. This is everything that I wanted when I was younger. If you look at the makeup up close, it's awful and my skin is screaming for just a smidge an iota of hydration in any form my lips and i mean my hair is just i just need to throw on some like old school instagram and myspace kind of filters on it and then i think i'll be golden just fully embrace the like it's character it's character it's character but yeah um what uh what do we think this was a lot of fun for me. I've never done a video like this before with like talking whilst doing makeup. I think I'm still a bit unsure how to do it. Let me know what you think. Any former scene kids, let yourselves be known. Let me know any other aesthetics or styles you want me to try out. That is it for this video. Have have fun. I will see you guys in the next one. Oh, bye bye. Like it's very late.